City Field will never be the same. I'll tell you. Casey Stengel, Gary Carter, and Yibuto L'Chaim, Tom Seaver, they never imagined this. We, on behalf of the OU family, we want to thank each and every one of you for joining the family and joining us today. God bless each and every one of you. you know, tefillah is how we communicate, how we reach out to the Almighty. What's Torah? How the Almighty reaches to us. What he has to say to us. And every morning we start out our day, Talmud Torah Keneged Kulam. We quote the Gemara and Shabbos. And that is what? That whether it's my relationship with myself, my employees, my master and maker, whether it's my relationship with my spouse, my body, God speaks to us. And he lays out a series of axioms and postulates. We started out Torah at City Field this morning with Rabbi Rosner and Rabbi Elephant speaking about an employer's responsibility to their employees. Last week in the DAF, it was the opposite. What's an employee's responsibility to their employers? In this area, Talmud Torah Kenegad Kulam, it defines our religion. It's a religion of chachma, of rationality. It's a religion of thought, of concepts, of ideas. Rav Moshe Feinstein Zatzal, the Posei Kador, the Gadol Hador, who on seven continents, Jews from around the world sent their shilas to him. What happened? After 40 years of playing that role, he was asked to have a retrospect and reflect upon his life. And he says, you know, I have two disappointments. People ask me about everything and anything, but there's two areas of halacha that I should be getting so many shilas about, and I don't receive them. That is Hilchas Talmud Torah. How does one prioritize their own learning? What do they focus on? And the second is Hilchas Tzedakah. And in that light, in the statement of the Pose Kador, Rav Mavsha, we asked Rav Herschel Schechter, one of our Pose Hador, Rav Schechter who gets Shilas from four continents. The world lives by Rav Schechter. Every area, whether it's reproductive endocrinology, whether it's financial transactions, whether it's communal individual needs, we turn to the Rosh Kolel, to Rav Schechter, for our needs to mentor and to guide us. And secondly, Rav Yonason Sachs, the Rosh Yeshiva, the Rosh Yeshiva of Landers College, of Turo College, who's mentoring 400 young men who will be the future of the Jewish people. And these two great Talmidei Chachamim are going to help us define our relationship with the Almighty, define that mitzvah that is the defining factor in our Yiddishkeit, in our relationship with the Rabboni Sholem. Without further ado, it's a great schus. We'd like to ask everyone to rise as we hear from the Rush Kolel, Rav Herschel Schechter. Thank you very much. <clears throat> in Chumash, we have the mitzvah of Talmud Torah mentioned quite a few times. And uh, the Beis HaLevi points out that there are two different aspects to the mitzvah. One part of the mitzvah is We have to learn the laws of the Torah in order to know how to observe the mitzvahs. As far as this is concerned, that Limen HaTorah is a Heksha mitzvah that enables us to observe Shabbos and Kashvis and Taras HaMeshpach and everything else. The men and the women are equally obligated. Women are just as obligated as men to learn all of the sections in Shulchan Aruch that are relevant to them. Then there's an additional aspect of Limen HaTorah. That's a mitzvah bifnei atzmo. Even we who live in Chutz Loretz, <coughs> and we don't stumble upon any agricultural mitzvahs here, a few, the Rabbanon, but on the level of the Rais, we don't have any agricultural mitzvahs. But still, Min HaTorah, there is a mitzvah that we should learn Kol HaTorah Kulam. <coughs> Exactly how serious is this mitzvah? So the Pasik says in Kriyashma, Vidibarta Bam Shiftucha Bavisecha, Ubishakbucha Vukumecha. So the Gemara has a machlaikis where the Kriyashma is the Raisa the Rabban. How could Kriyashma be the Rabban? It's a Pasik, Vidibarta Bam Shakbucha Vukumecha. So the Rabbin Yoyna explains it means that the choice of those specific chapters to recite Shema, Bahayim Shema, that's only with the Rabban. The mitzvah, the pasuk only means we should learn Torah. 
B'shach b'chav kamecha. You can, min ha-tari can choose whatever parsha you want. You can be ma'vesedra. B'shach b'chav kamecha. It's only with the Rabbanan that you have to recite dav kishma v'ahoyoyim shumayim. The generally accepted opinion, thank you very much, the generally accepted opinion is the Rambam's view that Kriyashma is their ice. It's a machlekes in the Gemara. Taisvis seems to hold that Kriyashma is love their ice. But the Rambam's opinion has, uh, has been accepted. There are Kriyashma as their ice. The obligation to learn Torah is a separate mitzvah. These are counted in the listing of the 613 mitzvahs, counted as two distinct mitzvahs. One mitzvah to learn Torah, another mitzvah to recite Kriyashma every day. How often does a person have to learn Torah? Once you say the Pasuk, B'shach B'chav Kamecha, goes on Kriya Shema, so what about the other Pesukim that speak about Talmud Torah? How often does a person have to learn Torah? So if you wouldn't have any additional Pesukim, you would have probably said, once a day, every day, just like the Gemara says, a duchening. A Kohen is only obligated to duchen when he's called upon, when we request of him to duchen. But even when we request of him to duchen, let's say he davened by the first minion, he already duchened by the first minion. And then the second minion doesn't have a Kohen. So they ask him whether he can stay over to do him by the second minion as well. So the Gemara says he's not obligated to. Not min Torah, not min the Rabbonin. The fact that, uh, that the Kohanim who do him by Shachris are obligated to do him again by Musaf a second time in Eretz Yisrael, the do him by Shachris and by Musaf, that's only min the Rabbonin. Min Torah, since the Pasuk is written in Stama, it's unclear how often you have to observe the mitzvah. So it's self-understood that it's once a day every day, not obligated to do him more than once a day. The Ramam thinks the same is true regarding tefillah, that uh, the obligation to daven three times a day, four times a day, five times a day on Yom Kippur, you daven Musaf and Nila and everything. That's only mid the Rabbanan, but the obligation to daven once a day every day, according to the Ramam, that's a biblical obligation. That's Minatur. How did he get based on the Pasuk? So how did he get this idea once a day every day? So the Mepharsh say he got it from Nat Gemara by Duchening. Gemara says the Kohanim are only obligated to do it once a day, every day. So the same is true regarding <coughs> Tefillah. The Pasuk doesn't say how often you have to daven, so it's self-understood once a day, every day. But, so if he wouldn't have an additional Pasuk to shed light on the nature of the mitzvah of Talmud Torah, we would have argued the point and said that the obligation to learn is a little bit once a day, every day. But we have a Pasuk in Sefer Yeshua, that interprets the Pesukim and Chumash. Pesuk and Sefer Yeshua says, So that, so that leads itself to two interpretations. The Gemara presents a machleik as satanoi. The Gemara Menachas has a machleik as satanoi. One opinion has it, and that's the generally accepted opinion. One opinion has it that instead of saying once a day every day, we say once a day every day and once a night every night. It's like the Pesuk, like the, if we would have said, Kriyashma Zlav De Raisa, so we said, the Dibartaba means the mitzvah of Talmud Torah. Once a day, every day, and once a night, every night. So we pass, and we assume, like the Rambam, that the Kriyashma is their Aisa. So Bishach Bokamecha goes on Kriyashma. Then there's a separate mitzvah of Talmud Torah. So the Pasuk says, a little bit every day and a little bit every night. So the Gemara says that it's a mitzvah to tell everybody that when they dama Shachras and they dama Mayriv, and everybody who Dabba Shachra says the three parashios, Shema, Vayoyim, Shema, and Vayoymer. So strictly speaking, everybody was Yoytze in the mitzvah of Talmud Torah. Because you, you learn Tashmek Tabak every day, you learn Tashmek Tabak every night, so strictly speaking, you Yoytze. That's the generally accepted opinion. That Vagisa Yom Valayla tells us not that it's once a day every day, once a day every day, and once a night every night. That the Gemara has another opinion. That's the, generally not the accepted opinion. The commentaries in Shulchan Aruch quote that the minority of the Rishonim Paschal like that, that we understand the Pasuk, to mean that we have to learn all day and all night. <clears throat> so generally, that's not the accepted opinion. So the question is, why do we assume, why are we encouraging people to go to the base Madrash and learn every evening or to learn Kolol uh, Boiker before they go, before the Dham Shachris? They start learning every morning at 5.30, daf yaymi, every night. What's the whole story? You're yaitze with a uh, shmek tabik. The Gemara says, you with the kriya shma that you, that you recite every day for shachas and every day for myra. So the answer is that there's another pasik that tells us what is the nature of the mitzvah of Talmud Torah. A lot of the boys who are learning yeshivas don't realize this. What is the essence of the mitzvah? So the boys think that the mitzvah is to ask good kashas, to, say, to answer Rebbe Kevega's kashas, to give it good to Rutzim. That's the icing on top of the second piece of cake. 
What's the main course? What's the main mitzvah of Talmud Torah? So the main mitzvah is to learn what are the 613 mitzvahs and to know all of the details of the mitzvahs. That's why you look in the Rambam, the Rambam wrote the Sefer Mishnah Torah, where he gives you an abridged form of Kola Torah Kula. He says, all you have to do is read Tanakh, and then you read my Sefer, and he gives you a Bikitzer, all the maskanas of, of all of the Allah, all the details regarding all the 613 mitzvahs. So the Rambam wrote as, by way of introduction to the Mishnah Torah, he wrote the Sefer HaMitzvahs. It was written in Arabic, but it's, and the Mishnah Torah is written in Hebrew, but the, but the Sefer HaMitzvahs is the introduction to the Yad HaZaka, and then in the, in the Mishnah Torah, in the Yad HaZaka, in the beginning of every section, the Rambam says, this section is going to have 15 mitzvahs, 10 mitzvahs essay, and 5 mitzvahs loisas. This section is going to have 25 mitzvahs, 15 mitzvahs loisas, and 10 mitzvahs essay. And then when you get to the end of the whole Mishnah Torah, you see that the Rambam has covered all the 613 mitzvahs. The whole, the ikah, the essence of learning Torah is really to learn which are the 613 mitzvahs, the Maratam Osam and to learn all of the details of all of these mitzvahs. <clears throat> Unfortunately, in the yeshivas, they emphasize so much Pilpulo Shal Torah. The Gemara says Pilpulo Shal Torah was originally given to Moshe Rabbeinu as a matona, that he should have the right to keep that for his descendants. And they'll be the only ones who will know how to figure out uh, how you establish halachas. Moshe Rabbeinu was a good-hearted fellow. He was not but type of science. So he gave it over to Klal So that's what... And the yeshivas were all eating the ice cream. We're all eating. That wasn't the main mitzvah of Talmud Torah. The main mitzvah of Talmud Torah is to know which are the 630 mitzvahs, to know all of the details. So every Jewish person is obligated to learn kol ha-Torah kul. Every Jewish man, the women are only obligated to learn those sections of Arachayim, Yeridea, Ebenezer, Chashmish, but that are relevant to them. Mekach Toes, and Oinoi, and Gezel, and Halvoa. Women make Halvoas, Taras HaMishpacha, the women have to learn all the dinim that are relevant for them. And the men have an obligation to learn all of the 613 mitzvahs and all of the details of these halachas. So even if one should assume the way we accept la halacha, that hagisa yama maloila doesn't mean we have to learn bahasmada all day and all night, every free minute of the day. <clears throat> even if you assume you it with the shmek tabik every day, you recited the three parshas of shma by shachris, and one recited the three parshas of uh, of Shema by Myrib, so you might say the mitzvah of Hagisba Yom of Aloilo, <coughs> but still a person has to figure out how he's going to master Kola Torah Kula. It doesn't mean he has to do it today, right now. We have a whole lifetime, so we have to figure out how in the course of our lifetime we will succeed, how the men will succeed in covering Kola Torah Kula. The question is, how is that physically possible to cover Kola Torah Kula? The Gemara has a comment in Erevin on the post of Garucha Meyeretz Mida Rechovim Ineyam that the Pasuk is speaking about something that's so vast, it's impossible to fathom something. So the Gemara said that's referring to the Torah. The Torah is impossible to, to fathom everything in the Torah. How can you say there's an obligation? Every Jewish person, people make a mistake. They think only Rabbonim or only Mechanchim or only Iluyim are mechuyiv to learn Kola Torah Kula. It's not so. The obligation is mutal on every Jewish man to learn Kola Torah Kula. So how is that possible? How is it, how is it physically possible to master Kola Torah Kula. If the Gemara says the Torah is Arucha Me'eretz Mida Rechavim Ineyam. So the answer is given by Balatanya, the first Lubavitcher Rebbe has. He wrote his Shulchan Aruch. So basically, those who are familiar, Shulchan Aruch of the, of the Alter Rebbe is something along the lines of the Chayyodim, like the Chach Masodim. He gives you the Kitzah, what it says in Shulchan Aruch, and he makes a Hachro, whenever there's a Machlekes, the Taz and the Magan Abram, he gives you his, his Hachro. Whenever there's machlekas near a day between the Taz and the Shach, he'll give you his achra. Except for Hilchas Talmud Torah. Hilchas Talmud Torah, he rewrote from the beginning to the end. Because you look in the Rambam, you look in the Shulchan Aruch, Hilchas Talmud Torah, they never did a good job on that. The Rambam starts off Hilchas Talmud Torah, who's potter from the Chiyav Talmud Torah. Instead of starting off, who's Chayiv and to what extent is Man Bechuyiv. So it starts with the Ptur. So that's where the Balatani rewrote the whole Hilchas Talmud Torah. And he has this comment in his section on Hilchas Talmud Torah, how is it possible to say that every Jewish man is obligated to master Kola Tarkula? It's Arucha Mi'eretz Mido, Rechav Yam. So he says that Gemara is speaking about the depth of understanding of the laws of the term. But what is the text of Kola Tarkula? It's not that difficult. It's not that much. 
when you go to law school, you have to read more books than this. When you go to certain, certain areas, certain disciplines, you have to, meet, you have to cover more books than c the definition of Kala Tarakula. What consists, what constitutes Kala Tarakula? So the Alter Rebbe says, the 24 Sifri HaTanach. Believe it or not, learning Tanakh is also part of Talmud Torah somehow, and the yeshivas, they forgot about that. They think it's, that's something else. Lehman Torah is only Gemara, that's not so. So you have to learn Kola Tarakula includes all of Tanakh. Mishnayis, Tosefte, Bavli Yerushalmi, Sifro Sefre Mechilte, Rambam and Shulchan Aruch. So the Grana, not so much, not so much. When you go to any Jewish library, you have so many Svarim, you have Rabbi Baruch Ber, and Rabbi Naftali, and Rabbi Shimon, there's so many Svarim commenting on these, but the basic text of Kola Tarakula that each Jewish man is obligated to master is that's the text. All of Sifrei HaTanach, Chav Tal Sifrei Tanach, Mishnah is Tosefte, Sifro Sifrei Mechilte, Pavli Rushalmi, and Ramam and Shulchan Aruch. <coughs> so, it practically boils down to saying that we really accept the opinion of the other, the other Tana, the other Shita in the Rishonim. That we take the Pasuk of Hagisa Bayama Valoyla literally, that one is obligated to learn every three minute of the day. <coughs> We don't really paschal like that, but the, if the person is not going to, the person is just going to be to recreate my bashachas and my riv, he's not going to master the Torah, he's not going to know which are the 630 mitzvahs, and I'm not going to know all the details. So it boils down to saying that every Jewish man is mukhiv to learn, every free minute that he has, mukhiv to learn Torah. What do we say every free minute? Let's say a person has to make a parnosa. Normal people make a parnosa. person has to eat, he has to sleep, he has to raise a family. So what the mitzvah of making a parnasa is such a big mitzvah that it takes precedence over the mitzvah of learning Torah. There is a mitzvah of parnasa. The Ramah and Shulchan Aruch says it's a mitzvah in Hilchah Shabbos. He says there is a mitzvah to make a parnasa. It's not some mila dalma. It's a mitzvah to make a parnasa. But the mitzvah to make a parnasa is not that much, uh, it's not that it's so much greater than the mitzvah of Talmud Torah. We should say that the mitzvah of Talmud Torah is doicha, the mitzvah of parnasa. So the answer is, or Baruch Be has this famous essay, Tshuva L'Shol Me Medina Yadua, Rabbi Schwab, Zechon Lebrachem, when he was a young student learning in yeshivas. So he sent to Shailat to different Hasidish Rebbes and to different Russia yeshiva, whether he should go to university, as the practice was in Germany, Medina Yadua was Germany, uh, or should he sit and learn all day long? So the different Rabbanim gave him different answers. So the Rabbi Baruch Be is one of the prominent Rabbanim who published the whole essay in response to Rabbi Schwab's uh, Shaila. So Rabbi Baruch Be develops the idea based on the Bir Hagro, the commentary of the Vilna Goen, Amishnai Espeya, that's written by his students, Adera Salio, it's written by Talmide Hagro. So the Vilna Goen explains that the obligation, even if one should assume Vagisba Yom of Aloyla means one is obligated to learn Basma de Maruba all day and all night, it's not that the uh, parnasa is doicha. It's not that the mitzvah of eating breakfast, lunch, and supper is doicha, or speaking to your wife is doicha. No, the whole, by definition, the whole mitzvah to learn Torah is only one is obligated to learn Torah when he has free time. If he has to make a parnasa, so he doesn't have free time, so he has to try to kvetcha as much free time as possible. If, if he can choose one of two different jobs, if he'll take one job, he'll make a million dollars a year. If he'll take another job, he'll make a quarter million dollars a year, and he can support his whole family and put away money and savings by making a quarter million dollars a year. And, he, and he's intelligent and he's bright. And with the extra time, he'll only work a half a day. With one job, he'll work a half a day and have time to learn. With the other job, he'll make a, work a whole day and make a million dollars. So then that means that that's free time. He should choose to take the job that'll give him a quarter of a million dollars a day and learn the rest of the time because that's really free time. He can't uh, hide behind... Uh, the terrets that he, he has to make a parnasa. He's making a parnasa, making a quarter million dollars a, a year. That's enough to live on for sure. So whenever, that's the definition of the mitzvah. Whenever a person has free time, one is obligated to learn Torah. <coughs> that's how the Vilna Goin is quoted in the Deris Aliyah, Mishnah is pay. A lot of times people misunderstand. Rashi in his commentary on Chumash quotes this Agadate from the Gemara in, in Megillah that uh, for the 14 years that Yankov was learning in Yeshiva Shem Ever, he wasn't punished for his lack of fulfilling the mitzvah of Kibbutav. So, so boys in the Yeshiva misunderstand that uh, Gemara to mean whenever there's a conflict between Kibbutav and the mitzvah of Talmud Torah, so Talmud Torah takes precedence. That is not correct. 
It says explicitly in Shulchan Aruch. Otherwise, we follow Shulchan Aruch. It says B'fevish in Shulchan Aruch. If a person, a boy, is sitting at home and learning, and his mother asks him to please take out the garbage, or the father asks him to please, please park the car, please go shopping for something. So he has to be mopsik in the middle of learning. And to do the mitzvah, the definition of free time, one is obligated to learn every free minute that he has when he has free time. If you're mochif to do a mitzvah of kibbutav, or you're to do any mitzvah, so then that time is not free time, even if one is only obligated to fulfill a mitzvah mid the Rabbanon. Some of Arshim raised the question, the Gemara has a whole sugya in Yevamas on Dav Tzadik, that yesh koach biyad chachamim lakadov menatora b'shevi al tase. The rabbis have authority, based on Psukha Mechumish, the rabbis have authority to prohibit us from blowing shofar when Rosh Hashanah falls out on Shabbos, or to prohibit a ger, shenuz gar be'er of Pesach, the gear is not permitted to bring carbon pesach or to pre- prohibit us from putting tzitzas on a beg and shall pish them because of a concern. The Gemara says, They insist that we shouldn't fulfill certain mitzvahs. So, is that the case by every mitzvah of the Rabbanan? When you bench Chanukah licht, it takes a little time. When you daven three times a day, four times a day, five times a day, that takes a lot of time. So, if the obligation to daven more than once a day is only with the Rabbanan, so the Gemara should have said, Every time you're fulfilling a mitzvah in Rabban, Hadlokas Neiros Chanukah takes a few minutes. Moshe should have said, every time the Chachamim introduced a mitzvah in Rabban, they're in effect employing that principle, the Yashkech Biyad Chachamim, Lakadav Menatayra Bishay Biyad Tas, because they're telling us not to learn during that period of time. So the, the, the Stechemen has a long essay about this. At the end, that's not correct. Once the Chachamim required of us that we have to do a certain mitzvah, so that's not free time. It's not that the mitzvah of the Rabbanon is so important that it's the mitzvah of Talmud Torah. Mitzvah of the Rabbanon is not as important as the mitzvah of Talmud Torah. But that's not free time. By definition, it's not free time. <coughs> the Gemara has a klal, ho'isik ben mitzvah, potter mena mitzvah. When a person is busy doing one mitzvah, he's potter, and some Rishonim say he's prohibited from being mafsik from that mitzvah to do another mitzvah. So that both the Bavli and Yerushalmi say that this rule does not apply to Talmud Torah. When you mean a person is busy learning all day long, so he doesn't have to daven shachris, mincha, mayrev, he doesn't have to shake a lulav, he doesn't have to say halal, he doesn't have to daven musaf. What do you mean? He's busy learning all day long. So the Gemara, both the Bavli and Yerushalmi give the same kalal, that that principle doesn't apply. It doesn't apply when it comes to Talmud Torah. If you're obligated to perform a mitzvah, so that's not free time, so there's no chiv to learn Torah at that time. But whenever a person has an obligation, whenever a person has free time, then Taka has to learn. When he has the free time, he has to learn. Many communities, the Rabbanim, the younger Rabbanim, are encouraging the Balabatim to get more into learning. So they instituted Dafya Mishur and whatever, Mishnayas, whatever, in the morning, in the evening, at night, whatever. That's a wonderful thing. But it's not for everybody. We have to realize not for everybody. Sometimes people have to... There's a mitzvah to, to spend time with your wife. Oina. Shek sus oina. Oina means to spend time with your wife. That's part of the definition of oina. There's a mitzvah to raise your children, to be mechanach your children. What, are you going to leave everything to your wife? So sometimes if the wife is satisfied with that setup, okay, so she'll encourage her husband to go learn the base matters. That's wonderful. If she'll be able to see to it that the children do the homework and uh, she'll be able to discipline all the children. But if you see that uh, the wife is... is pleading with her husband to please help raise the children, please spend a little time with the children to do the homework with them. So then that's not right that the husband runs to the base medrash to learn. The din of ha'isik ben mitzvah, potem and mitzvah, does not apply to Talmud Torah. Husband has no right to say, I'm busy learning, therefore I'm not mechoyev to spend time to do all the other mitzvahs. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there are too many cases where the shalom bias is ruined by the husband because of his insistence that he wants to go learn all the time. He, d- he doesn't take any responsibility with respect to raising the children. That's not right. <clears throat> that's the husband's chiv, that's the father's chiv, to raise the children, to be mechanach the children. And the husband has an obligation to spend time with his wife as well. If the wife is encouraging, that would be wonderful. If the wife is encouraging the husband to please leave the house and to please go learn, that's marvelous. So then, uh, then the husband has free time. Then he's mechiv to learn. I think it's a wonderful idea that the Orthodox Union is going to get more involved now in Chizuk and Liman HaTorah. We should all be matzlich in this area. Thank you very much.